So there's the next project boat. And can anybody tell me what that boat is without me telling, telling you? So let's go up here, get it a little closer. That's a 42 foot boat. I'll walk around. This boat was made in 1970. And one of the things that are different about this boat is I guess when the boat was first, they first started making these boats, the prop shaft came out right there. And then it got switched, I think over to here. One way or the other, I can't remember. This boat is a 1970 MK2 42 foot Morgan. And this is a good boat. So the guy, he wants 10 grand for the boat. And he said, and he told me to make an offer. And I'll leave the email in the description and then you can email him if you're interested in it. So that keel right there, that keel is weighs, I think 7,500 pounds and it's made out of lead. So there's nothing really that drastically wrong with this boat. So if you wanted to come and take this boat, put it in the water and take it somewhere to the, around the Chesapeake, you know, to take it down to Florida or something like that, you'd have to spend a little time getting things ready. But if you just want to take it around the Chesapeake, you put it in the water, take it anywhere you want and work on it. So the other boats that were like this, that were made sometime around this era, I think they were called 41 Islanders, maybe, I don't know, but they were, they were a center cockpit, the, a center cockpit, and they were wider. This one is skinnier. This one's about 11, six wide and 42 foot long. And that's a lot of boat for a $10,000 and make an offer. So let's go up top and take a look on it on the inside. So it's a rainy day. So we're gonna we'll go down below and check out what's happening. And let's take a walk around this deck. And I came up here earlier and there's no soft spots on these decks. And the non-skid is original. So it hasn't been grounded off. It's still from what came out of the mold. So like some of the things that you'd have to do is rebed like those, 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 uh, what do you call it? The plates. And it's cleaned up. And I think he has a lot of old lines like you see there. And somewhere he has a big box of more lines. That's the mass, I would say, somewhere between 50 and 60 feet. But you know, this is a lot, I think there's a lot of boat. So the rigging, it's older, you know, but that's what you're gonna get. This is a project boat that somebody can afford to start out with at 42 foot and it'll take your crop it'll do whatever you want it to do so i think he has sales for it that are more than just i think he has sets of sales that are like two sets of sales for everything so he has two genoas a storm sail and a couple of mains i haven't not one soft spot yet Let's go up here. Let me go up here and fit some. Look, there's an anchor. There's another anchor. And look, it's got the winches up on the deck. And then look, it's got that extra stay sail right here. What are you, a jib? What do you call that? I forget what you call that right here that you can remove. And it's got a track that can slide it. Oh, shoot. 
back and forth. This is a lot of boat. This boat has a lot of potential to do whatever you want it to do. And for a guy that doesn't have a lot of money to get started, eh, it's a good boat. So I'm sure it doesn't have like autopilot down there or anything like that. But look at the size of those winches. I'm always talking about the size of winches, but it's not too bad. So let's go down below and check it out. So the cockpit lazarette leaks a little bit. And I think these stairs right here, they're kind of iffy when it comes to standing on. And look, the floor has been, I think that is decking material from Home Depot that's not wood. So she's got some leaks in her. Cause there's water right there on the floor. And it's got a big closet. And then there's the sails. Like I said, it's got double sets, two or three sets of sails for for the main and the and the jib. And then it's got one bedroom that's at the front. And it's, there's no carpet on it, but it leaks. You see where all the, around the tow rails and stuff like that, you're going to have to, everything's going to have to get rebedded. So it's going to, you know, it's, it's a, it's a project boat. You're not going to get something for 10,000, make an offer. That's all pimped up. So look, this is Charlie Morgan, Charles Morgan. He used steel in his boats. You see that beam? That's the chain plate. That's where the chain plate's attached to. So it's not like you've seen in the other boats. So there's the, like, there's one side of the beam connected to the wall. And then if you walk around to the other side, there's the other where it's bolted to the wall. And then when you come and then there's the beam and then the chain plates hooked to that. Is that, is that there? So the same thing on this side. So that, that looks pretty stout. And when I looked at all these walls, where the plywood attaches to the side of the hull, they're not rotted. So there's no issue with that. And then like, this is one of the issues. It's not really this floor that that, I mean, that's a pretty good idea to use on the, when it comes to the flooring, but you know, you're gonna, well, it's got a refrigerator and it needs, it needs woodwork fixed up that's what it needs so there's another place to sleep and then there, i guess there, i think there used to be a chart table right here that was made out of wood and it's gone and the layout on this kitchen isn't very desirable but remember this boat is only 11 6 wide and it's not a slow boat i'm telling you it probably you probably do eight nine mile eight eight or nine knots in 20, 15, 20 mile an hour winds. And then when it comes to the bathroom, that it's got a, I think that's a nature's head composting toilet. And those things are like a grand. So I don't know what's going on with the holding tanks, the water tanks, the diesel tanks. Those things are, 
things you have to think about when you buy a boat if those tanks have holes or whatever. So that's the video for a, the project boat for the, I guess for the every three weeks. And you know, Charlie Morgan, he's known, let me turn this around, to make a pretty decent boat. I think back in 60, back in the 50s, he was a sail maker and he made one of the first fiberglass sailboats back in like 62 and I think it was called Paper Tiger and it's, it's probably close to this boat and it won a lot of races I think that he raced down in Florida I think these boats are made somewhere down around St. Petersburg Florida and I think in I think in 62 he was racing the SORC so it was it's like the big races around southern part of Florida around the in the Gulf and Cuba and Miami so if you're looking for a boat and you only have a little bit of money this be a good boat oh one more thing the engine it's got an old Westerbeek in it and I don't know if this is the original engine or not but I it might be but I think they used to come out with, they had atomic engines in them. But this could be the original motor. And it runs. So it'll start up. And, you know, it probably needs, you know, just like any motor. It's been, you know, it probably needs a little bit of work. But, and it's old. And remember, this is an old motor probably from 1970. And it runs. So, you know, you know what you're getting. So there's the project boat. And the email is in the description so if you're interested email me That's, we're back from the boat and one of the things about old boats is the cushions are always no good they're just usually you know you buy a boat from the 80s or the early night or the 90s or whatever the the cushions aren't any good and everybody's always oh i gotta recover because you could spend if you go to a professional place to have your cushions redone redone you would it costs it costs a lot so we found something that i i i'm satisfied with so let's get i'm going to give you a before look of what our cushions are now which is some kind of hawaiian weird I don't know stuff going on and something we spent 125 bucks and I'm satisfied. I think you could sell the boat when at the highest price using these cushions. So take a look at the after, no the before and the after. So there's the Hawaiian thing going on. And I, I'm pretty sure those probably the those are the original cushion covers I bet from 1984. And so let's watch Shelly and time her and see how long it takes to, for her to put all the covers on. And uh, so let's go. So we got these off of Amazon and it cost us about $80. 80 bucks, that's a good deal. So I think they have 18 different colors to choose from. And then you can go to other manufacturers, they're on Amazon and they sell the same thing. And they have patterns and all different colors too. So the, uh, the next thing, I'm gonna, we're gonna do a test on the engine to check and see if the heat exchanger tube, the tube stack that runs through that both rubber ends are connected good on it. And we're gonna blow air up into it and see if it comes out the radiator cap. And that'll tell me if we have a hole 
in the tube stack. So let's go check that out. So it, it's been a week. The water is missing the antifreeze all the way down to the top of the tube stack. So the tube stack gets connected right here on, on this boot. It's right here. So there's like a copper tubes that run and it's about that big around. And this clamps on here and it does the exact same thing over there. So it just clamps on to both sides of the tube stack like that. If it's leaking there or the tube stack's leaking and it's just, I mean, it's brand new. If it's was faulty, we can right here, you can, I can cork this side off and I can take this hose off, push air right here. And if, and if it doesn't stay pressurized, air bubbles will come flying out of here. You'll see air bubbles. So that's what we're going to do. And if there's air bubbles, that means these clamps aren't clamped on good enough, which I don't know how they're, they wouldn't be, but I guess it's possible. Or the tube stack is bad. So let's do it. So to access the front of the motor is under the companionway. So you see this spot right here? That, that tube has got to get corked off. And we have to stop water from being able to be, or air getting pushed out of there. So I have to find something that'll stick up in there. Is it coming down? Yeah. More. Yeah, I know, but I don't know if I got room. So right there is where salt water, it goes up in there, runs through that tube stack, runs out to the exhaust. And that that's just like a radiator, keeps your coolant cool. So I have to find something I can stick in that hole and cork it off. My collection of corks. And I think this one. This one right here. See it's chipped up. I'll use that. And then I'll just cut cut it off. Because I can't get. I don't think this whole thing won't fit up in there. So I'll take this. I'll cut this off. And that'll be the cork. The inlet side of the seawater. Into the heat exchanger. Is corked off. So let's go to the other side and undo where it goes out the exhaust. Right here is where it comes out. So on this, where it clamps onto the heat exchanger tube, and on the other side, I didn't disturb it because I want to know if that was the issue or not. Because So all you have to do is pull this out and see look at just a little bit of water is coming out this is the universal cooling system pressure kit that i had in the last video and i went and got it back from you can get them at napa so we're going to use this to try to hook it into here and pump pressure in from this side So let's see how this works. I think that'll go like this. And then we'll put this one on like, like this. And we'll hook the pump onto this. slide that up in there yes and it fit fit and then we'll clamp this on because you don't need very much pressure we're just going to pump air into it because i got the other side corked off if and we're going to fill this up with water the heat exchanger 
and if air bubbles come if air bubbles come out the top of that cap where the where you put the fluid in some we got a leak right there Now my screwdriver is a little big. All right. So now let's we're going to have to put f f fill that all the way full. So we've got both sides of the heat exchanger tubes blocked off and well one side's going to pump air in. If air bubbles come there, it's where it's clamped on or it's in the heat exchanger tube. If this, if it, <laughs> the suspense, if this gets bubbles, it'll be easy fix. I hope we see bubbles. I hear it leaking over here on the cork side. There's no bubbles. No bubbles. That is no movement at all. That's 13 pounds. Nothing. Oh Lord, what can it be? So it's not in the heat exchanger. Oh my God.